this edition of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at this. So, what I've done is for the Wanhao 3D printer, I've wanted for a while now to convert the 40 millimeter opening to receive a 50 millimeter fan. So, one of the things that I needed to do was because of the size of the fan, uh, I mean, you can notice the structure here for the 50 millimeter versus the 40 with the size differences is I had to create a manifold to offset uh, the fan, uh, the new 50 millimeter fan from the 40 millimeter opening. So here as we look at it, this is the front side which will face out and here's where the 50 millimeter fan will mount. And then this is the back side, this is now the exhaust which will face the heat sink on the Watt Hauer face inward and attach um, to the extruder. Uh, allowing air to be blown in from this side and then obviously exit out this side. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit how I, I did this and uh, some of the tricks that I used to come up with this. Um, so I'm not going to delve deeply into the code. Of course, you can get the code out on my site, uh, openscad.diy3dtech.com. Uh, the link will be below and uh, you can kind of see how I put it together. But one of the things I kind of want to talk about is this was an interesting experiment. So uh, one of the pieces I did is if we look over here at the code, um, one of the pieces that I had to do is assemble um, create case because one of the pieces here uh, in going through this, there's, there's a number of different components here that make this up. And embedding all this into one module simply wouldn't work because of the order of operation had to be separated. So one of the things that you can see is that I've created the case, I've created a set of 50 millimeter stanchions, and you can see those inside of here. And then I've created a set of 40, 40 millimeter stanchions, which you can again, if I flip this around, <coughs> excuse me, see inside here. And now one of the things for reuse is I did allow it to create all four stanchions. Now if I spin this around, um, there are stanchions embedded in here which you can't see and technically because this is I've left this block solid I didn't need them so it's kind of redundant but I wanted to have the ability to reuse the code so I just simply left that there so um, when you look at the code and you wonder why did he put a stanchion there when I did, he really didn't need it that's why it's for code reuse um, so just kind of a little tip and trick there. But one of the big things that I'm doing is over here in create case is when I create the basic case in this section right here. So uh, basically, okay, I'm using basically a lot. Sorry about that. Um, I've used the rounded code down here. So uh, you've seen me use this module before rounded, uh, which I stole from the internet, which creates a rounded cube and creates this chamfering here on the, on the cube itself. And you see this. So I've stolen this code and it works real handy because again uh, for three-dimensionally you can use cubes and cylinders or circles and squares for, for 2D just simply by substitution. So it, it's a handy little um, piece of code to have. So anyways I want to come back up here so I've got my two fan models so I've got my um, uh, my, my basic fan model up here so if I uh, Let's just go ahead and pop this in so you can see. Whoops, if I hit it right. So what I'm doing is, oh, sorry, this is the inside one, but th that's okay. So what, I, what I've done is I've got two, two setups here. So I'm creating an outer shell here. So here's my outer shell, which is the uh, 40 millimeter side of the box. And then you notice here I've got the inner side of the box. So outer side, which is part of the union, and whoops, hit the right key here. And then the inner side, which is part of the difference here. And so I'm going to pop this out. And then what I simply do is I make a smaller version of the box inside to take out the, the interior, which we see here. And we see how this presses through to this side and opens it up. And this is one of the reasons you have to do this in multiple steps uh, with multiple modules as treating them as objects because if you don't what happens is it removes the material you place in, 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 in the union. So for example like this hole, okay, so this this interior uh, difference would, would 
mean that this hole would be removed and the stanchion underneath it would also be removed as part of the union because of the order of operation. So just kind of a handy little tip as it comes down to. The other thing that I did is I used the, when I made the hole here, I also, with a cylinder, I also tapered it to give it, be, make it a little bit more aerodynamic flow so it, it tapers in and we'll see this on the bench a little bit and again this comes into the module down here where we have the cylinder where we translate out uh, this so if we just kind of let's highlight this and you can kind of see how this now goes together to difference out the material now I didn't get all too wanky on uh, the design of this from a hydrodynamic um, or fluid dynamic flow I should say uh, I, I, again, I'm a little bit familiar with fluid dynamics and that, and, and again, it wasn't worth all the modeling effort to do this. I just used a little bit of common sense because the other piece I did is, this is the second version, is I did uh, insert some some redirection back here because the, the original unit I developed was actually pretty simple. It was just a hollow box, um, and, and I was a little bit concerned that the air would just simply run around a little bit too much. So this is why I've kind of tapered things, and it wasn't really that hard to do. It is again, I just made the internal box smaller, uh, this piece here, smaller than um, it was before. Because in my original design, what I had done is I, I designed it so I had like a three millimeter shell all the way around. So instead of allowing that three millimeter shell, I just shortened it up in perspective so as you can see here this box doesn't come all the way through so when I have my um, let's just hit this here so when we take a look at this we see that this combination of this tapered cylinder and this box in here actually create this kind of unique airfoil situation where the air runs in this way hits this uh, tapered edge and then is ducted into the heatsink so Again, pretty simple design throughout this whole piece. Uh, also, if, if you print like this, you simply have to use some supports touching the bed because of this top uh, piece on the 40 millimeter. But it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, if you will, on printing and you just pop out the supports. Um, because the larger opening, uh, and again, since we filled in pretty much around here, it doesn't require any support, so it's it's pretty much just in this this basic area over here um, that'll require some supports. So, anyways, uh, let's go take a quick look at the time lapse of this printing, and then let's go back to the bench and take a look at the finished product. Uh, uh, and, you know, as of course you guys can probably figure out, I've already printed this out, and it uh, came out pretty well. Very impressed with it. So, uh, let's take a look at it. Welcome back to this edition of OpenSCAD. So uh, we've taken a look in the computer at uh, designing this uh, manifold bracket for the Wanhao. Uh, we've seen the time lapse of it being printed out. Now here's the actual piece. So it actually came out pretty good. So one of the things that uh, I did do to prototype it, printed it out of PLA. Uh, the end product I probably print out of uh, either HIPS or ABS. Um, however, for testing purposes, I think PLA is just fine. One of the other things I did is also printed new stanchions for the back which mount to the heat sink which had the nylon uh, washers in them, or not washers but spacers. And again this piece mounts in here and slides onto the heat sink and because the, they're square they fit into the uh, bottom pieces of the heat sink sort of like this. So uh, again, came out pretty good. So the idea is, is again we sort of have this convex area which funnels the air from the 50 millimeter fan so the 50 millimeter fan will bolt to the front sort of like this and then this will bolt onto the extruder so the air will go in here be directed here and then out there and then what we've done is we've also tapered this so as the air exits here it hits this buffer and is directed into the heatsink so uh, again we have the 40 millimeter opening here we have for the 50 millimeter fan here and so we'll have to see how that really works so uh, 
anyways, this actually came out pretty good. I'm, I've been pretty happy with the print and the design in OpenSKID. I may make a few uh, future improvements depending upon how this prototype works out. So kind of stay tuned. Uh, I'll also put this at least up on Thingiverse too. And so if you guys want to make it, get the uh, OpenSCAD code, it will be on the site too. So anyways, if you found this build interesting, if you want to do something like this, hopefully I gave you some ideas. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more of this coming out. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.